Hello everyone, it's Bianca again from The Closet Historian, and today I thought I would share with you what I bought on my trip to France. I was trying to have a quite strict budget, uh, as I am currently not working, so I uh, really shouldn't have bought much at all. Uh, I knew I wanted to get a couple of berets, uh, and I definitely succeeded in doing that, but I also picked up a lot of other things that I wasn't really intending on buying, but ended up being enough to sort of give a haul for you all. So I thought today I would show you the things I bought in Paris. I kind of, you know, got distracted. Uh, it's easy to do, I, it, home or abroad. First things first, one cannot go to a place that has a La Durée and not indulge in the macaroons, the tea, the experience that is La Durée. La Durée for me is sort of like um, the same way I feel about Disneyland which is that I love them so much that even though they're, I know in my heart that they are overcharging me, I don't care. I, I just don't, I don't care. Go ahead, I love you so much, La Durée slash Disneyland. I will give you all of my money for the joy and experience that you give me. So I went to La Durée, but these aren't just normal cookies, guys. These are macaroons and they're amazing. And I like to think that the price of the most delicious uh, cookie of all time kind of includes these excellent boxes that they put them in. So I definitely saved the boxes I still have the tissue paper in this one, which I can toss I suppose um, But these boxes are actually really great for storing jewelry or accessories in and sort of like a little souvenir within themselves So after you eat your macaroons, you still have something left. The first time I got macaroons I got the black box <clears throat> and then when I went back because I didn't go once, guys. Come on. I got the pink box. I also have a mint green colored one of these from the last time I had gone to La Durée. So I have many, many boxes from them that I use to store jewelry or ribbons or hair accessories. So though, to get a six pack of these, I think it's 17 euros for this box full of cookies. And then you eat the cookies and, but at least you still have the box afterwards. It's really expensive. It's kind of ridiculous, but I love La Durée. Ever since I first saw Marie Antoinette back in 2006 and fell for all those pastel colored dream treats, I had wanted to go there. So every time I'm in a city that has a La Durée, you will find me there. And this time we actually went twice um, to just get tea there and get uh, pastries as well. And their tea is delicious and it's a great experience. I think to get tea, like to get a pot of tea to share, is around eight euros. Um, and they're really supposed to be individual, but you can definitely share the individual tea with another person depending on if your waiter goes for that or not. We had one waiter who was like, sure. And the other waiter was like, no, they're individual. And I was like, come on, buddy, save me the eight euros. But um, a pot of tea there is about eight euros. And then to get a really fancy pastry is about 10 euros. So you can get out of there for like 30 euros. Expensive tea experience, but I think it's worth it. I really love La Durée. It's delicious and super cute and fun. So they have a separate shop. They sell some of their teas in the macaroon restaurant patisserie locations, but they also have a separate shop along the Tuileries now that has just their teas, fragrances, and candles. And I had to go over there to get just rose tea because I knew I wanted to get one of their teas to bring home as well. So that's what this little canister is. It's got the La Durée L on the front there. And this one is just the rose tea. It's just black, um, black tree, bleh, black tea black tea and roses, and I'm excited to try it and have the La Durée experience continue on a little bit longer here at home. So can't wait to crack into this. The other tea I bought actually was, um, we were at the Gallery Lafayette, 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 Gallery, um, just behind the opera, the big, huge Art Nouveau stained glass, gorgeous department store where I can't afford much because it's Prada or Dior or Cartier and things that one day I would like to have. Until then I went to the food section Coos, coos me, coos me. So this tea from this lovely brand, um, which they said French made, but this seems to be, yeah, made in France, but it seems to be a Russian company. I can't really figure it out, but I got their St. Petersburg tea, which is black tea with red fruits and caramel. So it's super tasty and great for my afternoon tea time that I'm trying to get into drinking less coffee and switching to tea a little bit more in the afternoon. So this uh, is for the days I'm feeling a little bit less fancy than La Durée Rose tea. 
So that was another little long lasting souvenir that I got. Um, this is kind of a weird one, but whenever we're at our friend's house in Burgundy, they always put out these, what I would call fancy salt, but it's this French salt that they have many different brands. It's called Fleur de Sel, um, which just means flower salt or sea salt. I don't really know, but it's yummy salt. So I bought salt. I mean, it's not your typical souvenir, but it is a cheaper souvenir. So I brought home some fancy French fleur de sel salt to put on my avocado toast and anything else I decide to add more salt to, I suppose. I actually really do like salt quite a lot. It's probably bad for you, but I decided to get fancy salt. So that was a another souvenir that I kind of had planned on buying because I knew it wasn't gonna be that expensive to get salt there. So that's a weird one, but Check out the salt in France, it's delicious. I got these um, little absinthe flavored mints. So we'll see how those are. I've never actually had absinthe before, but the packaging is so cute and it was just a small little thing down by the register. So I thought I would toss that in with my salt um, and give those a try as well. I also got um, another sort of in the mints and candy section. I oh, know I shouldn't try and read the French guys. I shouldn't, I can't. I got these rose mints. <laughs> I buy these here in the States all the time, but here they're really expensive. They're like $6 for a little canister. And then in um, France, they were two euros. So that's um, even with conversion rates, that's still a much better deal. So I got another package of these rose mints. I love anything rose flavored, as you might've gathered already from this. So I just picked up another box of these since they were so cheap over there. And then the last sort of food item I uh, brought to take home were these hard candies. They're just so cute. Like I know you guys, it won't be in focus, but they're these cute little fruit and flower shaped hard candies from this really cute chocolate and candy shop that um, had really fancy chocolates in it. But I decided to go for the hard candy because I knew it would make it home in one piece. So I can't wait to try these maybe after my tea time. And they're just so adorable that I couldn't pass them up. So that was it for the sort of food items. The thing I had wanted to get when I was in Paris were new berets because I like a beret hat, I wear them all the time, but it's hard to find different uh, colors of them here in the US sometimes. I knew that they had them in all the little touristy, sort of kitschy, uh, cheapy uh, little stands everywhere that they have at all the main tourist places in Paris. And I decided this was my chance. So I got quite a few. Uh, the first night we got into Paris, when we came up from Burgundy, we went to the Galleries Lafayette. In their sort of nicer, well laid out touristy souvenir section, they had really nice berets. And so that was a thing I didn't expect because I knew that they would have them at the little touristy stands, but I didn't expect them to have nice ones anywhere. This one was a bit more um, than the cheap souvenir ones. These ones, um, this is one of the souvenir ones from the little stands. These ones are three for 10 euros or about four euros uh, individually. And this one was 24 euros. This one is all wool and it's just a lot finer quality than the touristy ones. I don't notice like a huge difference, but when you want like a nicer souvenir, I think it's cool to go for the sort of upgraded version. And then I also got this one, which is sort of a little bit looser weave. And this one is a linen blend and it's got this nice flecked yarn with a little bit darker green and a little bit of ivory flecked in the yarn. And I'm gonna be honest, the reason I bought this green colored one is because it looks like it's gonna match the new Royal Vintage 1920s two-tone shoes that are coming out soon and I have pre-ordered those and they are going to be on their way to me when those pre-orders ship in June I think it is so I kind of knew that this was going to match those shoes and so just outfit planning in advance uh, I thought that would be nice to match those shoes and this one was a little bit less than the wool one this one I think was 19 euros so still quite pricey for just a little beret but it's a nicer souvenir and I knew it was going to match those shoes so well so I picked up this one as well and then of the cheaper souvenir beret variety, I got burgundy. I got sort of this heathered medium gray color. I bought a bunch, so look out. I got this pumpkin, deep pumpkin spice color as well. Then I got a navy blue, just your basic navy because I have a hard time finding a navy blue beret. They're all covered in the lint from the other ones. So this one I got in the touristy little shops on your walk from the metro station up to Montmartre. And this is the only mustard one we saw. We actually walked up and we're like, oh, we'll souvenir shop after we visit the church and everything on the top of the hill. And then when we got back down, we couldn't figure out which stall we had seen the mustard yellow one at, but eventually we found it. And so I've got the mustard to add to the trifecta 
of fall color berets here. So I wanted to find berets that I have maybe gloves or belts or purses in the same shade. That way I already knew they would fit into my wardrobe well and allow me to accessorize outfits in new ways. And I could have kept going, to be honest. They have lots of really cute colors. They have a lot of pastel and brighter colors as well, but since I don't wear those as often, especially in fall or winter, I bypassed those ones this time. We'll see next time what happens. Then, of course, while I was at those little cheapy souvenir, touristy little shops, it, it's, it is easy to get distracted. Most of it's really like cheap aluminum Eiffel Towers and keychains that you can kind of tell are gonna break instantly. So I don't really poke around those shops too much. I just knew I wanted the berets, but I did find a t-shirt that I liked. I just like, I like having big t-shirts to sleep in. And this one, I actually made the mistake of buying a large instead of an extra large. So it's not really roomy enough for sleeping in it, but it's this t-shirt here. I just thought the design was cool. Having a big all over design like this is fun. I don't really know why I bought this, but I do like it quite a lot. So I'm sure I'll wear it sometimes when I, when I am super not, when I am being super casual and just like running out to buy a zipper or maybe going to the movies like late at night or something, I do just wear jeans and a t-shirt like a normal human, um, which is so not glam and very unvintage of me to do so. But at least I can have a chic Paris touristy shirt to wear in those occasions. And another thing I was not intending to buy, um, which is the theme of the souvenir shopping here were these really nice scarves. These, here's one, this one here, this is sort of the end of it like that. And these are hundred percent wool. And there was this really nice man and he uh, said he was from Kashmir and that his scarves were from Kashmir. Who knows? And he was so nice in the morning. We kind of came up out of a metro station into a morning market, which was really cool. It was like in the square of a neighborhood. And they were having a market and he was selling these gorgeous silk scarves but then i was really interested in the wool ones because i love scarves like this i have kind of a trillion of them but these ones were the first ones i'd ever seen that were actually wool so i ended up getting two of them because he convinced me that he would give me five euros off if i bought a second one and i fell for that so i got the black one but the one i had picked up first was actually this bright green color so there's sort of these wide wool paisley scarves and they do make a great shawl. And I just thought this one, I thought it would be like really great with 20s stuff, this bright green color. I don't know, something about it really appealed to me. And I liked that they were actually wool. And I ended up using, I wore the black one that day and all over Paris because it was kind of off and on rainy and cloudy. So I ended up wearing them, which was actually quite useful because I hadn't packed a scarf. In the end, it was it was a good purchase. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't regret it, even though I wasn't planning on buying these scarves and I definitely hadn't budgeted for it, but they're really pretty and I, they will remind me of my trip and they're nice and wool, so there you go. Then somewhere we always go, I say we always go when we're in Paris, like we go all the time. Some place we went to uh, last time, we my family visited Paris back in 2012, was Shakespeare and Company, the famous bookstore that's right across the bridge from Notre Dame along the Seine. And uh, the, the original store, this store that is there now, is not the exact same bookstore that Hemingway and Fitzgerald and everyone used to hang out at, but it, that one was actually around the corner from where this location is today. But it's still a really cool sort of little rooms that you go through. They have a shop cat, any shop that's got a cat. I mean, that's where it's, that's, that's good times. So it's this great shop. And the first time we actually, um, we're planning on meeting some friends there later in the week, but we went in earlier because it was raining and what better place to duck into than to a bookshop. I mean, I love a bookshop any day. And so the first, um, visit I went in and I got actually another Agatha Christie because I finished reading Death on the Nile finally after months on the plane ride to France and so I'm excited to read this next one. I wanted to get Murder on the Orient Express because I was in Europe and it sounded like a fun idea but they did not actually have a copy so I got um, Appointment with Death so I'm excited to read that and they do actually stamp your books if you buy them there with the Shakespeare and Company logo and they actually ask you would you like your book stamped? It's like, what? Of course I would like my book stamped. So yes, you can get English books in America, but this one, I will always know that I got in Paris, so. And then the second time when we went back um, to Shakespeare and Company with, um, to meet up with our friends later in the week, I actually, you know, was, I had already bought my Shakespeare and Company book for this trip. I didn't need to be looking around, but when you're in a bookshop, <laughs> you're bound to find something. So I actually ended up getting Miss Dalloway by Virginia Woolf, and I've actually never read any Virginia Woolf, because I am devoid of classics in my life for some reason. And so I'm really excited to read this. It just sounded interesting to me um, when I read the description on the back. 
and my um, our family friend that we were meeting up with actually said that she really enjoyed this um, and that she thought it was good and that, she, that I would like it. So I'm looking forward to reading it. So the last thing, dear viewer, that I bought in Paris was quite a splurge because uh, it definitely was not budgeted for. And I just sort of got caught up in the moment and the amazing beauty and wonder of the shop that we were in. So we had already gone to the Petit Palais in the morning to the Orsay Museum and then to Laudre for tea. So I was having a pretty great day already and I don't think I actually had bought anything that day so I was doing quite well. And then we decided to, or I had kind of put down on my list of things to do that day, if possible, to stop into a famous taxidermy shop that I knew was new, nearby. Um, the shop's called De Roll, but I think the you're not supposed to pronounce it that way. That's terrible French, it's like De Roll, but I can't do the French R nearly as well as the French can, so De Roll is what we will go with for now. But it's this famous taxidermy shop that's been running since the 1830s, and they've been in this same location since the 1880s. They had a huge devastating fire um, a little while back, but they've totally rebuilt and they've got donations of uh, taxidermy and old display cases from all over France to sort of rebuild this amazing Victorian eclectic shop full of taxidermy, mounted skeletons, um, articulated skeletons, and a whole room of entomology and bugs and butterflies that you can of course buy and put in gorgeous little vignettes on your wall. And I, I, I was going to the shop thinking, I can't afford anything here. I mean, taxidermy, when beautifully done as it is there, is quite expensive and I don't even have my own house to put it in yet, so I just will be looking. And then I saw a case where they had seashells and coral from sort of around the world and some of them were really cheap, like three euros or six euros. I thought, oh, I can get a seashell to remember this uh, experience by, something really inexpensive, less than a Starbucks, you know, something non non detrimental to the budget completely. But then the butterfly room happened and you know I've always wanted framed butterflies and then I was in a room where they had drawers and drawers, gorgeous old-fashioned Victorian drawers full of different butterflies and insects from all around the world in every color and it was marvelous and amazing on so many levels and then there were these empty boxes that you could get and choose a butterfly to put inside and they would mount them for you and I couldn't resist. And so I bought a butterfly. This butterfly right here. Ooh, let me see where we can get no glare here. I mean, this thing is gorgeous. And so I went for this size box, which meant that not only could I get a butterfly, but I could get a little, a little friend for the butterfly too. And originally I wanted to get a scarab beetle because I love ancient Egypt and I thought that would be fun to have a scarab beetle and they also had electra, be uh, electra beetles from uh, I think those are from Thailand mostly which are those really gorgeous jewel like beetles that they used to use to embellish the gowns and things like that um, but I went with actually a bee because a lot of people call me bee my name being Bianca a lot of people nickname me bee and so I've started collecting bee themed things so I decided to buy a bumblebee but not just any bumblebee this is actually a blue bumblebee from um, the island of Java, which is in Indonesia again. So this is um, butterflies from Indonesia as well. So this is sort of my Indonesia little box of Parisian souvenirs. Um, I'll get a, some good close-ups of this butterfly as well because I mean it is just gorgeous. And you could pick these shadow boxes with either a white um, inside or black. And I, of course I want black because I want black everything, but I was worried the butterfly really wouldn't stand out. But as soon as you put the butterfly in this box, because it's covered in these tiny, tiny little green specks, it really actually does pop off of the black background more than the bee does. But you know, the bee's just his friend, so it's all good. So I'll get some detailed shots of this and talk more about my experience soon on a blog post because that was such an amazing shop. Too amazing to walk away with nothing. And getting these actually adds a lot of difficulty to your trip home because you can't put them in your checked luggage. You have to keep them carry on and they were very serious about warning us that you can't get the you can't shake them or they can't be jostled too much because insects and like butterfly wings are super fragile so it's really easy for this to just sort of crumble and break apart so me and my mom she had gotten a butterfly too and they were um wrapped in bubble wrap so you couldn't exactly see what was going on inside and so the entire you know 24 hour plus journey home where you're already it's already a battle because I, if you could sleep on a plane 
I mean, good for you, but I, I really can't sleep on a plane anymore. So it's just a, a long haul of being awake and sort of miserable in a small economy seat. Um, but I was holding onto this flat so it didn't get shaken or jostled the entire time because it was in my hand carry-on luggage and then I just sort of held on to it the whole time on the plane ride home and then we switched planes when we got to the US and then another plane ride and then we actually had to deboard that plane and get on a new plane three planes but the entire time I was holding on to my butterfly that I had invested love and lots of money in too already um, so I was holding on to this, making sure he arrived home safely. So I was really, really happy when I took the bubble wrap off and this guy was fine. <laughs> so that was my Paris shopping haul. I hope you guys enjoyed me sharing a little bit about what I bought when I was in Paris and you can kind of see what you might fall for. So look out. Um, <laughs> thanks for watching today. Oh, hello. This is Editing Bianca here and the camera cut me right off at the end there. I just wanted to say thank you for watching this very, very long video and I'll see you next time here on The Closet Historian. Bye. Nope.